So Final Cut Pro 10.4.9 has just been released and whilst there are a ton of features I'm going to go through a couple of the features I think are really cool if you're a video creator. So let's jump into it. Welcome to the video, I'm Mark Brown from Editor's Keys and as mentioned, Apple has just updated Final Cut Pro 10. Now we're on 10.4.9. Now there are loads of new features in this version of Final Cut Pro 10, but I actually just wanna go over a few of the really great ones. I think they're gonna be really great if you're a video creator that creates videos for YouTube and for other social channels such as Instagram Stories or the Instagram or Twitter feeds. There's also some great audio features Features, and I'm going to jump into Final Cut and show you how those work. But before we do that, I'll just go through uh, a few of the other features they've uh, put into this update, which may be important for you too. So for the first time in Final Cut Pro 10, um, editors can create proxies in either ProRes proxy or H.264. Now the dimensions are as small as 12.5% of the original file. So if you are working with particularly large files, this could be a real great help, especially if you're editing on something like a MacBook Pro. There's also big improvements to ProRes RAW, and there's also significant improvements to metal transcoding with RED and Canon RAW files. It's now up to three times faster on a MacBook Pro, so that's super cool. Anyway, let's jump into Final Cut Pro 10 and I'll show you these updates and how you can use these automated social media cropping tools and the new audio fade function. So let's get into it. So just quickly before we start the project, as mentioned here, if you want to create proxies now, uh, this is just some footage I filmed on the Sony ZV-1. If you go down to the right hand side here, you can now see a new transcode option. So if you want to create optimized media or proxy media, if you have create proxy media ticked, you now get the option to choose your codec, which is pretty cool. You've got ProRes proxy or H.264, and then you can choose the frame size, which is essentially the quality and you can go all the way down to 12.5 so if you are using an older computer or if your original files are just super huge this is the place to change this and this will make editing as smooth as butter okay so let's show you the first really interesting thing and this is something that's been available in premiere for a little while so i'm super happy that this is here in uh, final cut pro 10. so this is kind of social media cropping now you've always been able to do vertical videos in final cut but they've now set up new project sizes so first of all if you go to new project you can see here you now have the option of square and vertical formats which is really cool it just makes you know creating a new project much much easier but the real magic is something I want to show you here which is where Final Cut can change an existing project into a vertical or a square project and it uses artificial intelligence to do that and even move things around like um, lower thirds so I've got some footage here this is just taken from a Sony ZV-1 I went out with the wife and she was doing some twitching with her new uh, Sony a7 III lens so you can see I've got various shots here that are slightly off to the left, slightly off to the right. Uh, we're going to have a lower third pop up in a second, which is, of course, off to the left. So what we're going to do is I want to create this project for Instagram stories, let's say. And to do this normally, you know, you would have to kind of re edit all of your footage you would have to move the titles around and things like that so let me show you how this works within the new update of Final Cut Pro 10.4.9 all you need to do is go to your original project right click on it and then click duplicate project as and then what I'm going to do is click I'm going to, well I'll first of all change the title to ZV1 vertical vertical if I can spell vertical there we go and we're gonna change this to vertical from the video size format. And the magic button you wanna press is this new smart conform button. So simply tick that, hit okay, and then let's watch the magic happen. So this takes a few moments, you'll see it analyzes all of the timeline clips, and then in a couple of minutes, it will create a new project. Okay, so that's done. That took about 35 seconds to create that. So if we now open up this vertical project and play this through, you'll see that Final Cut has automatically analyzed all of the clips and it's now centerized them 
for vertical video. And it does overall actually a really, really good job. You can see all the faces are in the center of the frame. Uh, all the shots have been moved slightly. And what's best is that it's moved the lower third. So the lower third was obviously off far to the left. Now it's in the center, but still to the left of center in vertical video. So that's really, really cool. Now what happens if you actually want to uh, move something around within the frame. Let's just say it's not framed quite as well as you'd like. Maybe let's say if we get to this camera here, maybe you want to see the camera body. So let's show you how you do that. So all you need to do is select the clip that you want to move around. So let's say I want to move around this shot here. Um, all you would need to do is let's just get rid of the thumbnails there. Um, all you need to do is simply click this icon over here, which is the transform tool. Now you can see the entire 16 by 9 frame around the video. But if you click this little icon here, this gives you the overscan. So you get to see uh, what is around the shot. And I think this is really useful. So if we, if we move this uh, to the right and just adjust this, let's say you did just want to see the camera and not really the lens. Uh, once you hit done and we play that back through, you can now see that's been edited and moved along. So now the camera body is in frame and that's exactly what we want. So you can add uh, keyframes if you want to kind of move a shot along as you go, but essentially that's how you so do the it. Next feature is a really cool audio feature if you want to up your audio game. Now we've all been there where you've maybe filmed two scenes and the audio just doesn't match up perfectly. So you may need to kind of bring the audio levels down or add a transition crossfade to the audio, that kind of thing. Well, it's now been added in a way that makes it a lot more easier than before. So we've got two shots here and I've, I've picked these on purpose. These are two terrible shots where the audio really doesn't match up just of a stream and me walking up some stairs. So have a listen to this. So you can see it's quite a sudden jump between the two shots. So now what you can do, if you select both the clips, you can come up to the modify menu, go down to adjust audio fades, and you can also reach this by hitting a keyboard shortcut, which is option and T. And then when you press this, if we zoom in, you can see now that Final Cut has added a lovely little crossfade between the two shots. And this will just make this uh, slightly less abrupt when you um, play your footage back. So it's still quite a quick transition there. So what you can do if you wanna say maybe make the stream last a little bit longer in the background, which, which is what I would do, uh, pull this forward and then you can drag, oh, you can drag this little slider here to the left. And this will mean that you'll have your audio fading out a little bit longer over the next shot. So let's, play that. Oh, let's just play this back here. So not the best example, but you can see it's just an easy way to get some nice audio fades between your shots. So there you go. What do you think to the new Final Cut Pro 10 updates? Are you going to be using these new features? I know I certainly am. If you've got any questions, leave them below. And uh, we love to see your comments and we do reply to every single one. And remember, we've got tons of Final Cut Pro 10 videos in our playlists here. So if you want to see those, click up here to watch those videos next. But thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.